Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Robertson Toronto, and today I'm going to create a New York City pigeon. And what I like to do is always have on hand in a file a smooth ball so I don't have to go into Blender and recreate a piece of clay uh, with the right topology and being smooth. So if you just have a smooth ball in a file, you can always import that and then create whatever you're going to sculpt. That's what I like to do. So what I'm doing here is I'm using um, the move tool to stretch the body. This pigeon is not going to be um, animated, maybe the feet, but like many pigeons in New York City, they just sit on ledges and uh, rest and sleep on crevices of buildings and cornices. So this pigeon is going, for one of my scenes, the pigeons are going to sit on the cornices of buildings. So what I'm doing here is masking out a portion of the clay. And then what I do is I press control I to invert it. So the only a part of the clay that's will be able to control is the part that's not mass as you can see here because the pull the move tool will stretch other parts of the body if you do not do this so the way I do it many other people might do it differently is that when I want to get out of mass I go back to um, inverting the mass and use control mask so it can erase what I blocked out in the beginning. And what I do also is I use a reference. So right now I made a photocopy of a New York City pigeon. And what I always notice, being born in Manhattan, I always notice and seen pigeons my whole life. They always have a very um, metallic, um, purple neck, or top of their head is kind of shiny metallic purple. So that's what I like to do. Is uh, this is for animated film? So accentuate those features on characters and animals that I create. So right here I'm shaping like a piece of clay. It's never going to come out right in the beginning, but you keep molding and shaping things until it looks something like a pigeon. So back with the mass, invert the mass, and now I'm going to backtrack and erase the original mass that I did so that the, the clay can become uh, fully usable. Then those little tiny cuts in the clay, I just go back and remesh. So that's something we want to do. We want to remesh. Every time we stretch and pull things, it breaks the clay apart. Another important thing is to always save. As you're working, save your project because sometimes our computers will just do whatever it wants to do and we could lose our work. So as you're working, it's good to continue to save. She looks a little weird, but we're going to try to figure it out. So now I'm adding clay before I smooth it out and clay in those areas where there's cracks. Now I'm smoothing it out. And with this 
project here, I'm using a stylus pen and pad, not a mouse. It took a little getting used to, but sooner or later, if you use it enough, it becomes just like the mouse, the pen. And the pen is the, the best option to use when sculpting. When it comes to modeling objects, I use the mouse. Like a mouse, the pen has two buttons to control how much pressure you're going to put in the size of the tool. The beak, a little adjustment on the beak. Like I mentioned, this pigeon is going to sit on ledges of buildings, so I'm not going to have any bones put in, into this pigeon and or wings. The wings are going to be fixed onto the body, so it's in a few minutes, we're going to paint this model, and then we'll paint it to look like the pigeon has wings. Just like we did with the masking of the head, if you were to put wings, like you would mask the area of the wings and so and you invert it so you can pull and stretch the wings out, which I have done in different um different for different birds. So right now here I'm sculpting um from the image I have where the wings would be and this is supposed to be the feathers. So this is the clay tool. Now I'm going to use the scrape tool to gash the, the clay that I have put in. So this is on symmetry, so we get both sides. That's important when you start sculpting mesh, the quality of mesh and symmetry is really important to be alert to. Now I'm gonna use a smooth tool to make it look realistic.
again with that same tool that I used earlier. I'm putting a hole to for the eyes. Adjusting the nose. Or the beak. Move it out as you can see. Give it some more realism, some texture. I like to scrape and clay. Once again, we smooth out what we just did for a more realistic look. And in this video, we're not going to have the legs. If you wanted to, you can make the feet in a separate file and import them and place the feet to your liking. What I'd also like to do is go back to object mode and shade smooth. In this video, we're not going to retopologize the pigeon and if you're going to amateur the pigeon, you're going to have to retopologize. I use a software that does it, but it, when, you, when it does it, it actually loses some of the details. But when you shade smooth or subdivision, you'll notice that it actually makes things um, cleans it up, cleans the retopology. So now I'm doing the eyeballs. And from the reference, the eyeballs are black and orange. But I'm going to stick with a dark orangey color for the eyeballs. A real valuable um, thing I just learned recently when it comes to duplicating to save on computer space and each time you duplicate you slow down your project what has changed everything around was using alt d to duplicate alt d is basically cloning with almost zero bytes or kilobytes of information And when I do that, I always remesh the first original copy. The first original one before I copy, I would turn into a mesh. And then when you copy it and when you join them, there won't be any problems. Sometimes there's a few problems when you do the Alt D, when you duplicate, but this, these are problems you can resolve very, very quickly. But when you use the 
all D, sometimes you can't transform your um, object because it would transform every object at the same time. So that's the difference. But many things you're duplicating, you know, 50 times, if you do it with Shift D, it's just going to continue to slow your computer down, like drastically. So learning about Alt D is a game changer. So here I'm going back and doing the eye color, dark orangey. Great. Like I mentioned, I did the Alt D to duplicate the eye. So now I'm going to texture paint the model. And first what you do is bring it into edit mode, select all, go to smart UV project, click OK. And your shader editor, add a image texture and then in your UV editing name your texture I gave it a name of New York City Pigeon 2 now you go back to your shader editor and you find that and you connect it to your base color Then on the top left hand corner, there's the fill tool. Because the first thing you want to do is get your base color for your model. I chose a light gray. Now we're going to go to the paintbrush on the top left corner. So while I'm painting here, I'm symmetry, the painting. So you can see that on the right hand side is on the X axis. So what I do is I mix colors just like a painter would to blend in and give different effects. That's the purple I was mentioning that I always see a wheel of all have seen is that shiny purple underneath or on top of its chest or below his head.
And lighting is everything. So the colors we see here in our scene, either it's bright daylight, afternoon sun, before um, early evening, will change the color of any object or model you create. Being bold, I believe, does enhance a scene. So this pigeon might, people be wondering, why is it blue? Well, they have a mix of blue and grain and purple, all mixed from the top of their body. Then behi behind the head is grayish and black, but there's a mix of colors on their head. I'm not sure if that's a male or female thing, but most likely we know that the fe males have a lot of color. But I don't know the pigeon world, the pigeon species. How does that work? But from the photo reference, I'm a little bit exaggerating the tones. But it works, I believe. Another crucial thing is when you're texture painting, this is really important. We could save our file, the project that we have saved for this pigeon, but on the left side of our UV editor, you see the image has a little star, a little asterisk. That means that you have to save it there too. So you have to save twice. You have to save your whole file and you have to save the image texture because if you log out, and you come back, all this painting that you have done will be gone. So you have to continually save your texture. And as you saw, you didn't see here, but, it, but I saved it with a name. So there's two saves when it comes to texture painting. What I'm doing now is using the tool on the left with the finger, the smudge tool. So that's how I blend the different colors is with the smudge tool. What I've learned is that the computer is a little slow when you are using a smudge tool when you have symmetry on. So for smudging, I do each side individually, then symmetry. So it gives it more of an individual, it gives it more realistic because um, we are the same equally on both sides, but there is different variations to organic beans on the left and right side. So... But for some reason, the smudge tool slows down. Plus, this pigeon is not retopologized re either. And another note is when you retopologize, that removes all colors. Everything you have painted is gone. So... When you're painting, when you're making your creatures, be you could be bold. You could you could challenge things. That's how nature is. It's surprising. So, right there, I must have hit the paint without noticing it.
so I'm pushing some of the may the blue onto the dark blue smudge it This is what we are very we all familiar with the the gray and black of a pigeon. So now I'm going to turn off the symmetry. Each time you use the brush stroke, you have to save. It automatically starts all over again. So the minute that brush touches your 
sculpture creature, it's automatically needs to be resaved. Just like paint in the can, you want to mix the colors so they look organic.
just a few finishing touches. For our New York City Pigeon. Another thing to bring it, to make it look more realistic is to increase the metallic and decrease the roughness. I don't show that in this video, but that does bring a, a pop to the to your models. So here, my friends, this is the New York City, a pretty New York City pigeon. This pigeon mustn't, must not be from the rough neighborhoods. He must have, he must eat the good garbage. Maybe in Chelsea, there's the good garbage in Chelsea. So this is your bougie, New York City Pigeon. Thank you for watching. And until next time, have a good week.